Well, good morning, YouTube. I uh, just stopped at the shop to grab a couple bungee cords because once again, my Saturday morning's gonna start off with running a few errands and grabbing some supplies and then we'll uh, head back and get some work done. Let's hang out today and learn how to install a backup camera and see if we can get anything else done because I am gonna stop and buy some more wood for my framing. So let's uh, get the day going and we will see you soon. Boof. all week everything is staying dry around all of the windows so we are all good there no more leaks on my window deletes everything is also dry it looks like it's wet but it's not it's just the, the silicone but all of that's dry there is one leak one puddle see the puddle one puddle in my whole bus and that is because of that back window which after today's projects i'm going to get my backup camera installed and then um and then that's uh deletes all nice and dry as well but you can see all of my floor oh nope i see a leak right there where is that coming from uh it looks that kind of I can't tell. I'm thinking, pro oh, you know what, right here. Right there and right there. And it's running down. And once again, that is from that back window. That back window needs to go. You need to go out. Get out of here. So, yeah, today we're going to work on getting my backup camera installed and then, uh, Next big project will be that back window, but let's get over to the shop and get our day going. Okay, everybody. Well, I think I have everything that I'm going to need here to uh, get this job done, uh, but just wanted to kind of go over a few things with you, and that is the camera system that I bought. So this is the camera system. This is the monitor. Um, so this monitor, I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to mount it up there, but uh, that's the monitor there. All the wiring for that. Um, the, one of the things I like is right here. It has these quick connect disconnect. So that way, like when I have Matilda at storage, I can unplug the quick disconnect and take the monitor with me. Then this here is the actual camera. 
Um, this guy is meant to mount on a license plate frame, but I'm gonna mount it up above my rear clearance lights. And as you can see right here, there's a adjustment screw to where once I have it up there, I could adjust that screw, you know, and point it down to where it's in the, the proper vision of the bus. This camera system, um, it also does uh, accept a second camera if I wanted to mount one there going down the side of the bus or even there going down the side of the bus or if I even wanted one mounting going forward. Um, so this system and monitor will accept two cameras. Right now I'm only going to run one camera off it um, and I'm going to use it as my rear view mirror basically uh, because basically once that window is gone um, backing up is going to be a little bit difficult, so I'm going to uh, wire this up up here. Um, when I bought the bus, there was these switches here, which the dome lights no longer uh, work because they're all taken out. The heater does work. Um, the heater on my bus has been bypassed to this here. You flip this switch, boom, the heater goes on. Um, it controls my defrosters and a little bit out of the vent here. That's basically the only heat I have on Matilda as far as engine heat, but as long as it keeps my window defrosted, I'm cool with that. Um, this fan right here used to be hardwired in. It's something that I disconnected. It was controlled by this switch here, which are the wires popping up over here. If I remember correctly, the white one is the dome lights and the red is for that fan. Um, and then the, the other ones, I'm not 100% sure yet. I gotta chase those wires down. Oh, you know what? I bet you one of them is a straight hot wire because the guy did have a radio up here when I bought the bus. But anyways, next step is to uh, figure out which wire is there. I get power when I have key on and fan on. That's when I want my rear view um, well, my backup camera is what it's actually called, but I'm gonna be using it as a rear view uh, mirror, basically. So, let's get to work. First of all, let's get rid of this fan. We're not gonna, we're not gonna keep it, so let's get rid of it. It's all broken and all that way.
bye fans. Ugh, see ya, see ya, bye bye now. Bye bye now. Okay. Now, I could probably use that hole to my advantage. some metal that goes along the front here. I'm going to go grab it because that's going to make, you know, um, that's going to affect this job. So let me go get that piece. Okay, so eh, there's a screw in there. Let me take this screw out. guy lives
basically putting a bunch of tape right here because this is going to be in a spot where it's probably going to rub and I don't want it rubbing through my wires if it rubs I want it you know rub through this tape and save the wires Not sure on that one. Have to chase that one down. Uh, and, uh, this is the one that I believe I'm going to be tapping into. This should come on right now, and then if I turn that fan or that uh, switch off, it should go out. Oh, actually, you know what? I believe key needs to be on as well for that. Okay, so key on, switch on. Really? No power? I guess I was wrong.
There we go. Oh, okay, I see. That's a three-way switch. Um, I don't think I want it like that. Okay, so I'm not going to use that one. That one's out. That's on a three-way switch. I just noticed that's on a this fan over here had low and high speeds. Um, so eh, off of that. So now we go back to this dome light switch. Which that one looks like it should be this white one. using that one I wanted this on a switch though okay so we're still trying to chase this on my switch let's try the orange one orange and green is all we got left Could tap into that. It would just give me power. But see, I don't want power going to it all the time. That's going to leave power going to that full time. So, no, that's not going to work. Not going to work, not going to work, not going to work. So, now we go back to this then. So that was coming on, I don't remember if he needs to be on, it was on low, on the red. Okay, so low red works with the switch. Low red works with the switch. High. So that's that. Red and orange is low speed and high speed to this old fan. So I just need to figure out which one I want to use and tap into that. And then I will uh, I will change the switch out when I do all that. Okay. So I don't know if you followed any of that. I'm talking to myself. So I determined that out of these wires here, the red and orange is the high and low speed, which works high and low speed off of this without the key on, which is good because like at night, if I ever had visitors and I just wanted to see what's going on back there and I can't see, I could just flip this switch and you know see what's going on. So that's the game plan, folks, is I'm gonna tap into one of those wires there for my power, which will run over here to my monitor. And then I'm gonna run a power line down the side of the bus um, to the back, and that will power up my uh, camera in the back all when this switch is turned on. 
Okay, let's get this done now. put some uh, whatchamacallit um, butyl tape on the ends of these screws and also my orange cap that my wires are going to go through that'll help keep things watertight.
butyl tape behind these bolts so that way when I tighten them down it'll squish down and prevent any uh, water from coming in. Remember you can take any precautions of keeping water out. Keep it out. Water is the enemy. I have friends that are having to uh, redo, um, actually, she's not redoing. She is gutting, completely gutting and starting over. So, let me go grab a socket for that. I'll be right back. Just as an uh, extra layer of protection on water getting in, I'm going around these heads and my uh, wire with some silicone as well because I don't want no leaks. No, no leaks. looking but you know what I really don't care it's all going to be covered up with the spray foam you won't even see it the important thing is no water coming in and there ain't no water going to come through that so I am going to go and clean up the wires up front like I did here and pretty much this project is uh, complete and I have a working backup camera. Woohoo!
Okay, y'all, so here's the test. I've got it wired to this switch here. And when I flip this down, I should have a backup camera. Um, there it goes. Takes a minute to warm. Let me see that. It takes a minute to come on. Yep, because it's Bluetooth, there it goes. It's got a Bluetooth. I got a backup camera, folks. It's a pretty good, pretty good picture, too. I'm pleased with that. And I could use this, the way I wired this up, it'll stay on 24 seven, as long as I've got it in on position. So that way when I'm driving, I could actually use this as a rear view mirror as well. I should be able to turn these lines off. It should be a setting for it right there. So there's that setting right there. I could leave it in that setting and not have the backup lines and boom. I've got a rear view mirror backup camera. I'm a happy camper. And now that back window, the next sunny day is gone. It works. I didn't want to get a front facing camera now. I can do a split view and have a uh, front facing and a but I'm digging it. I'm happy with the installation. Time to go put Matilda to bed. And tomorrow will be another project. I cheated and used the grid. Got it my first time. And within the yellow lines. There's my yellow line there. There. And there, I'm digging that camera.